our best ever, I'm told, because as I said earlier, there are some things I've found out since uh, we lost uh, the outstanding Lee Scratchberry, a pioneer of a dub and reggae, a mastermind of Jamaican music. And while many of us know his music and life's work, our next guest spent some time getting to know the eclectic man behind the controls. David Katz is the author of a Perry's biography titled People Funny Boy, after his first hit single. Mr. Katz, welcome to Smile Jamaica. It's morning time. How are you, sir? Uh, great to be with you. Thanks for having me. Um, what's the fascination first with our kind of music, Jamaican music, before uh, you talk to us about uh, uh, Lee Perry? Well, I was really fortunate that I grew up in a place uh, with a very rich culture in terms of music that we were exposed to on the radio. You know, I'm from that generation. Radio was really how we experienced music. And the town I grew up in, San Rafael in the San Francisco Bay Area, it had one radio station, and that one radio station had a three-hour reggae show every Sunday night called Midnight Dread. And the host always played a lot of Lee Perry music, black art music, so I was exposed to that in my teens. And uh, it just really reached out and grabbed me and grabbed a hold of me and never let go. You know, it's music that breaks all the rules, music that uh, has no boundaries. And that really appealed to me. Yeah. Explain a little bit about music that breaks all the rules. Explain that a little bit. Well, you think about what Lee Scratch Perry was doing at his little home studio, the Black Ark, taking uh, master tapes that he had used for uh, an earlier vocal recording and stripping off the vocals and then uh, dropping the vocals in and out of the mix and boosting up the drum and the bass and then using effects units in a non-standard way to give the music a kind of a limitless quality, uh, just reverberation and echo that would make elements of the music seemingly go on to infinity. It's music that really feeds the mind, that really stretches the boundaries. And it made me reconsider what popular music could really sound like and what form it could take. Yeah. I think that's really a, a large part of his legacy because he's gone on to inspire practitioners in all these other genres of music like rap, uh, rock music, jazz, and with the, the whole remix culture that you end up with in dance music. Yeah, you would have heard me say it just now and I said it at the top of the show that I'm Jamaican and there are some things I didn't know about uh, Lee Perry until he died, unfortunately. Um, when you think about Lee Perry and the other outstanding Jamaicans uh, in music, where do you put uh, Lee Perry? Well, I think it's important to remember that without Lee Scratch Perry, Bob Marley and the Whalers, as we know them, never would have reached the heights of international acclaim that they did. You know, they first were collaborating at Studio One in the mid 60s. And then when Scratch became an independent producer in the late 60s and had his Upsetter Records label, uh, Bob Marley and the Whalers worked solidly with Scratch for about 18 months, between 18 months, two years. During that time, Scratch totally reconfigured their sound. He got them to strip it right down to the raw Jamaican roots to create something that was much more Jamaican, much more honest and uh, uh, raw in its uh, expression of their own, the, the core of their beings, really. And during that time, Bob Marley actually lived with Lee Scratch Perry, lived in his household with Perry and his family. They developed a very close friendship as well as a close working relationship. So I think that's another part of Scratch's legacy, really. Yeah. Um, final question, uh, Mr. Katz. Um, 
you spent some time with him, obviously, because you wrote the book. Um, is there anything that surprised you that maybe we still don't know about Lee Perry um, that you could tell us just before you go? Oh, there's lots of things about Scratch that's surprising. I think, you know, when we think about where he comes from, this small village in northwest Jamaica, a very disenfranchised part of the island, somebody who dropped out of school at 15, but just had this innate feel for music. Uh, I think his achievements are really extraordinary. And I think really he changed the way that popular music has been recorded and disseminated. So he's made this really huge impact that very few people could make claim to. Fantastic. Thank you so much, sir, for speaking with us this morning. Stay safe, look after yourself, and God bless you, sir. Many thanks. Our pleasure. Author of Perry's biography, titled People Funny Boy. His name is David Katz. And if you didn't hear, um, we lost an outstanding um, Jamaican in, 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 in music, but an outstanding Jamaican.